Hello everyone, I am Dr. Manish Ray and today I will be talking on cardiac arrest. When an apparently healthy, normally functioning heart comes to a complete standstill in less than one hour, the condition is often referred to as a sudden cardiac arrest. Now, the most common cause for a sudden cardiac arrest is a preceding heart attack. The first one hour of a heart attack is called the golden hour. So during this time, when the blood supply to the heart is compromised, the heart becomes irritable in some people. It becomes electrically unstable and can start beating at extremely rapid rates, a hazardous condition which can cause the heart to come to a complete standstill in a few seconds to a minute or less than or, or a few minutes. So this condition is called as a cardiac arrest. Fortunately, not everyone with an acute heart attack suffers from a cardiac arrest. Only 1 to 2 percent of people with acute heart attack suffer from a cardiac arrest. Also, it's important to know that there could be other reasons for a sudden cardiac arrest apart from a heart attack. There are many genetic conditions and cardiac muscle disorders which can cause the heart to become electrically unstable and result in a cardiac arrest. It's important not to overlook these conditions because some of these conditions are genetic and could involve other members of the family also. Now, it is important to realize that during a cardiac arrest, the circulation comes to a standstill. The blood supply to every organ gets affected, especially the brain. And if the heart is not restarted as early as possible, ideally within the next 5 to 10 minutes, the chance of survival is very, very remote. It's sad to say that less than 5% of the victims of a sudden cardiac arrest survive or even for that matter, make it to the hospital alive. So, you know, understanding that sudden cardiac arrest occurs more often in the community and not in the hospital and we have a very short time window where we can intervene to restart the heart you know emphasizes that you know the person who can make a difference during a cardiac arrest is not the doctor it's you it's the person in the community who witnesses the cardiac arrest timely identification of a cardiac arrest initiating cardiopulmonary resuscitation or cpr until help arrives or an aed arrives or an ambulance arrives is the only thing that would matter during that time. Rushing the patient to the hospital is all in vain because the chance of survival will be less than 5%. So CPR is an absolutely essential life skill which everyone should know. We really strongly urge you, each and everyone, to learn CPR. It's a basic life skill which everyone can know and should know and must know. So including small children as young as 10 years can learn the concept of CPR. Please do learn CPR. You never know. Someday you may be able to save a precious life. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am uh, Professor Madhusudan Upadhyay. Today I will just talk to you about uh, how important saving a life is and how everyone can be a lifesaver. And all that can be done with just two hands of yours. We don't need sophisticated gadgets. We don't need uh, equipments. We don't need any personal. All of you and with your two hands, you can save a life. All this should be done at the spot whenever there is an accident happening or drowning or somebody has a cardiac arrest. Why it is important is we have about four minutes of oxygen reserve in us. And if that is exhausted, the person's brain cells start dying to avoid that. To prevent the death, we have to make sure that the heart is kept on pumping. How do you do it with your two hands? I will demonstrate it at the end of this session. But as I said, you need only two hands and nothing more than that. Why is this important is the brain is mostly dependent on oxygen. And if the oxygen is not supplied to the brain within first four minutes of somebody stopping breathing, or somebody's heart stopping beating, the person with us will turn vegetative and he will not be useful to the society at all. To avoid that, we believe that everyone can be a life-saving rescuer and everyone should be. Like in the Western world, we should also train our generation to save a life at any given time. As I said, we need only two hands and nothing more than that. The two hands can save a life. When you encounter someone who has met with an accident, who has had a massive cardiac arrest or heart attack, or somebody has drowned, who needs you, you have to assess them first. You look for signs of life. 
if your victim is moving coughing or breathing that means that the victim does not need you if none of this is present then you have to act you have to use your hands and your brain to resuscitate someone or to revive someone how do you do it place the victim like this on a hard surface if they are in water you have to rescue them and then you have to try to resuscitate as lay people all you have to do is the chest compressions you have to make sure that the heart beats how do you do that is take your hand one of the hands the heel of the palm goes right along the middle of the chest and place it in the middle of the center of the chest take the other hand and place it on top interlace your fingers so that you don't traumatize the patient if the fingers are spread then you go right on top of the victim's chest or the patient's chest and then you just compress compress at a rate of 30 at a time for 100 to 120 per minute and the compression should be about 5 to 6 cm and not more than 6 cm just watch me doing it you start counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 30 and it goes on like this for 5 cycles that will be about 30 into 5 it should take about 2 minutes then you reassess whether the patient's breathing or movement or cough has come back if it hasn't come back then you continue this as long as the help arrives when the help arrives you leave the patient hand over the patient to the experts and then you can move away thank you